Hey there, Dodd Middle School. So good to see you again. We're about to start a brand new unit that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. This one on heredity and genetics really gets into the concept of who are we and where we came from. And we're going to start with the concept of life has to come from other life. And depending on the species you are, that may look different. But one thing they all have in common is the idea that we have to pass DNA onto the next generation. And what that's really for is to, to give a blueprint or a instruction manual of how to create that organism. And so what we're first going to do is kind of look at two different categories of reproduction. The first one being asexual reproduction and the second one being sexual reproduction. All right. And so I'm going to switch slides. So as I switch to this slide, I want to bring up the concept of, I know that when we say the word reproductive system or sexual reproduction, if you guys were all in front of us teachers, we would see you either giggling or looking down or playing with your fingernails or, or doing anything you can do not to make eye contact with us teachers, and we get that. So just let me at least put you at some ease knowing that your families could be sitting right next to you right now watching this, that we are not going into boy parts and girl parts so much. Much. Um, we're really focusing more on the genetic aspects of it. And so, yeah, we are going to bring up words like egg and sperm, but that's probably about as embarrassing as it's going to get for you guys, all right? And so, because we really can't tell the story of where you came from without saying that we had to get DNA from two people to create you. And that really brings us to the two different kinds of reproduction that living things can categorize themselves as. And so, some species reproduce asexually. They're creating identical copies of themselves, sort of like going through the copy machine, where one becomes two, and then two become four, and then four become eight, and then eight becomes 16, and 32, 64, 128, um, 512, 1,024, you know, you can take it from there. But the idea is that each individual they get to a certain size and then they become two smaller versions of themselves which will then grow and divide and become two smaller versions of themselves. And so asexual reproduction tends to be quick because you're just making identical copies. And so it's quick but it lacks diversity. Everybody in this crew is identical except for the very last critter on the end, which looks like there's a slight mutation where he's missing one of his eyebrows. Which kind of explains the idea of how there could be different strains of colds or flu, is, is there could be small changes in the DNA that, that change how the virus or how the bacteria or whatever it might be might infect us, all right? And so we really also can't talk about asexual reproduction without talking about your own growth. You guys, you may have learned that you came from one cell. And from when that one cell divided, it was two. And then it was four, just like the bacteria. And you've been growing ever since by doing that. In other words, it's not as if there was a Mr. and Mrs. skin cell that fell in love and had baby skin cells when you skinned your knee. Skin cells make skin cells, but there's no mommy and there's no daddy. They grow to a certain size and then they divide and they grow to a certain size and then they divide again. And so that's how you guys are growing right here, right now. You are growing asexually, but you can't ignore that that first cell had to come from somewhere. And that's where the sexual reproduction part comes in. And really all sexual reproduction means is that we are taking DNA from two members of the same species and blending it together to make a unique combination of DNA that does not exist in any other organism. This has some advantages. It creates diversity among the species, not just animals, plants as well. Pollen is the male component of plant DNA. It's in a sense plant sperm that is floating through the air or stuck to the bee or whatever it might be, hoping that it will get just some blind luck that will help it land on a flower of the same species where then it can create seeds which are the plant's version of new babies for the next generation. When we're talking animals, 
This could be the mama dog, and this could be the daddy dog, and this is the baby dog. We have the dog with white ears, the dog with brown ears, and a dog, a baby dog, that has one of each, a blend of its parents. So take, for example, even the unfortunate situation we're in right now with COVID. You'll find that some people are naturally more resistant to this particular virus than others. That's an advantage for the species. In other words, saying that if some of us are strong enough to survive this virus, that would mean that we would probably have children who have those same traits that will survive that virus. The differences among us in many ways strengthen our species or strengthen any species that is reproducing sexually because there's going to be so many variations of what that species might have for strengths and weaknesses. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. All right. So what we're going to be doing at this point is you're going to look a little bit deeper into the differences and similarities between asexual and sexual reproduction. All right. After that, you're going to end up with a Google form and you're going to fill out that Google form and then you are done with this lesson. Then we'll be going into this in a deeper fashion, um, including having a special guest and some activities that I think you guys will enjoy doing. So we look forward to seeing you again and hoping you'll learn a little bit more about who you are and how you got to be here. All right. Bye bye.